enthalpy. What is it? Well, enthalpy is effectively a measurement of energy. We don't talk about enthalpy, we talk about enthalpy change. Enthalpy change can be given the symbol delta H, and it is the heat, that is the energy, transferred in a reaction. And we can give it this added little extra symbol if it's done at standard conditions, i.e. room temperature and pressure, RTP. You've come across this before in GCSE. We have a graph to show how the enthalpy or energy is changing throughout a reaction. If the overall enthalpy or energy goes down, that means that the enthalpy change is negative. So that means that it's exothermic because energy is being released. And it's the opposite if the enthalpy increases. That means delta H is positive, means energy has been absorbed, so it's endothermic. That's because enthalpy is basically a measure of total potential energy of all of the substances involved. And in reality, there's only really two types of energy, potential energy and kinetic energy. So if potential energy goes down, that means kinetic energy must go up. Therefore, the temperature will have increased. Now, yes, we can talk about the overall enthalpy change in a reaction, but it's useful to think about the enthalpy changes for each individual step that is happening during a reaction. And so there are lots of these different enthalpy definitions that you need to learn. Sad but true. I'm going to write these all as sort of shorthand, but you'll need to be able to recall these and write these down as the full definitions. And all of these go for one mole. So first one, enthalpy change of formation, very important one. This is the enthalpy change when a mole of a compound is formed from its elements in their standard state and their standard conditions. Almost the opposite of that we have bond dissociation enthalpy. This is when all the same bonds in one mole of gas molecules are broken. For example, diatomic chlorine split into just the individual chlorine atoms. We have the enthalpy change of atomization of an element. It's when one mole of gaseous atoms is formed from its elements in standard state. So that's, for example, half a bromine molecule, and it's liquid, isn't it, at RTP, makes gaseous atoms of bromine. And similarly, the other side, we have the enthalpy change of atomization of a compound. It's when one mole of gaseous atoms are formed from a compound in its standard state. For example, sodium chloride turning into gaseous atoms of sodium and chlorine. And down further, we have first ionization energy when one mole of one plus gaseous ions are made from its atoms. And then we have second ionization energy as well, just going from one plus ions to two plus ions. First electron affinity, the opposite of ionization energy, if you will, is when one mole of one minus gaseous ions is made from one mole of gaseous atoms. And then same thing for second electron affinity, going from one minus to two minus. Then we have enthalpy change of hydration. That's when we have one mole of aqueous ions being formed from one mole of gaseous ions. Then the enthalpy change of solution. So when one mole of a solute is dissolved in enough solvent such that no further enthalpy change occurs. So basically when we dissolve one mole of an ionic substance. We have lattice enthalpy of formation when we have one mole of a solid ionic compound formed from its gaseous ions at RTP. Then we have the opposite of that, lattice enthalpy of dissociation when one mole of a solid ionic compound is formed into its gaseous ions. So like we said, lots of these take place, lots of these can take place in a single reaction. And we can picture that by drawing a diagram to represent a Bourne Harbor cycle. Now, Hess's law says that the total enthalpy change of a reaction is always the same, regardless of route taken. So that means that whenever we have a reaction, we know we're going to have a certain number of these things happening, but it doesn't matter in what order. We can use Bourne Harbor cycles to calculate lattice enthalpy change. Let's say that you're on a mountain ledge and you want to know how far it is to the ground directly, but well, let's say that it's too dangerous to go straight down, so you can't do that. However, there is a route. If you go up, then across, then down, and then down again, let's say. And if you went up 20 meters, but then dropped eight meters, and then another 25 meters, well, to reach the ground, that must mean you've descended 13 meters altogether. Your displacement is minus 13 meters. And so it's similar with a Bourne Harbor cycle. Let's have a look at this here. We have 
gaseous sodium ions and gaseous chlorine ions and we want to know what's the enthalpy change when solid sodium chloride is formed from that we can think about going directly or we can go around the houses and go through different processes to find out that instead so we always start off with the enthalpy change of formation now if that happens to make solid sodium chloride that means that we would have had sodium and half a chlorine gas molecule so then how do we get from our na solid and half chlorine gas all the way round to our ions well first of all we need to take into account our enthalpy change of atomization so let's do that first for the chlorine so that turns it just into cl gas and then we also need to do that for sodium to turn the sodium atoms into sodium gas okay so we're nearly there we've taken care of the states and now we just need to turn them into their ions let's do sodium first because that is an enthalpy increase so we do the enthalpy change of ionization that takes us up to na plus plus electron plus cl gas that is a positive enthalpy change but then we need our cl to make it cl minus this is a negative change this is enthalpy of electron affinity and so we go down and we've ended up at na plus gas plus cl minus gas and that is where we started so I'm going to label all these different delta H's. So if I'm looking for the lattice enthalpy change, then therefore I can say that delta H6 is equal to, well, we're going up first to the top through delta H5. We're going the opposite way to the arrow, so that's going to be minus delta H5. Then we're coming down the other side, down our three arrows, so that's minus all of those. Then to get to the bottom, it's actually following that blue arrow, so therefore it's just going to be plus that enthalpy change there. So let's say that we know all of these numbers. You've got to be careful with your positives and negatives. All of these numbers are going to be in kilojoules per mole. And I end up with minus 787 kilojoules per mole. So that means that the lattice enthalpy of formation for sodium chloride is minus 787 kilojoules per mole. Now this is just NaCl, but if this was, for example, Na2O, sodium oxide, then we'd need to double all of the values for Na because we have two moles being used of sodium to make one mole of sodium oxide. A couple of things to remember, it's always good to start with your enthalpy change of formation. Let me go up from there with our enthalpy changes of atomization and ionization. Be careful, you're going to need the first ionization energy, but you also might need second ionization energy if your metal is in group two. Same thing goes for electron affinity if your non-metal is in group 6. It's worth noting that yes, we can calculate this lattice enthalpy change, but that's only going to be true if our lattice is purely ionic, that is spherical ions. That means that charge is distributed evenly around the ions. However, in reality, there's always going to be some covalent nature to the bonding in your lattice that means the ions are slightly polarized so we can compare the theoretical and the experimental values for this enthalpy change and the closer they are then that means the more ionic the bonding in the lattice is lastly we have enthalpy of solution we saw this in our definitions and there's kind of two steps here when you dissolve an ionic lattice first all of the ionic bonds are broken and then bonds are made between the ions and the water molecules surrounding them now because water molecules are slightly polar that means that our slightly positive ends will stick will bond to the negative ion in our ionic compound whereas the more negative end at the oxygen will bond to the positive ions now we can calculate the enthalpy change of solution using a born harbor cycle again but it's a lot simpler because we said there's two steps here didn't we let's take sodium chloride again firstly like we saw earlier we can have our lattice enthalpy change that's going to be a dissociation if we're turning it into our ions and then to make them aqueous well that's going to be our enthalpy change of hydration and so easy enough then we can say that the enthalpy change of solution is equal to the sum of these
so we just saw for sodium chloride that the lattice enthalpy change is 787 kilojoules per mole. It's going to be positive this time because, of course, we are splitting the ions up. And then let's say that we know we have the enthalpy change values for hydration for both sodium and chlorine. They're both negative. And so adding these up, we end up with a very small value of 17 kilojoules per mole. So this actually is going to be endothermic. So I hope you found that helpful. If you did, please leave a like. And if you have any questions or any suggestions, then you can put them in a comment down below or hop over to the Discord and put it there instead. See you next time.